Good morning. Hello. Welcome to season three, episode five of Mindful Meditations on Art Jewelry. My name is Alison Barnett, and I'm coming to you live once again from Patina Gallery here in beautiful Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's summer in Santa Fe, and our city is just a burst with wonderful cultural activities from our seasonal opera, the Santa Fe Opera, chamber music, flamenco dancing, the arts. It's just a wonderful, wonderful time to be in Santa Fe. And if none of you, if you haven't been here before, it's a great time to join um, and see our wonderful city different. We have been welcoming Anne Ziff to the gallery um, all week. Anne is a wonderful um, um, artist and um, um, chairman of many boards and philanthropic organizations around the world and we're going to welcome her today and then she'll be joining our conversation here with me live in the gallery and before introducing Anne I would just like to share with you a little bit about Anne um, and um, beginning with the fact that she is chairman of the Metropolitan Opera a wonderful organization that shares opera with the world and makes opera accessible to everyone she's also vice chairman of the Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts Sing for Hope, a wonderful organization with over a thousand performing artists who go to hospitals, nursing homes, veterans homes, and schools to perform and to share their art with all of those wonderful people really in need of music and healing. She's also on the board of the World Science Festival, an organization which is a wonderful bridge between science and the arts, the performing arts. She's also on the board of the LA Opera, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, and many others. Her passion for the arts and her generosity and creative spirit really drive her every day to make art and beauty accessible to all. She is a one busy lady, and in addition to all of these um, wonderful contributions that she makes to the arts, she also has a great passion for jewelry and for gemstones and has one of the most impressive collections of gemstones of anyone in the world. Encouraged by her husband years ago, she went on to collect fantastic gemstones which she shares with us in her jewelry today and so without further ado I would like to welcome Anne to the conversation so let me see how to turn the camera with these new icons on, on Instagram so I can share um, this moment with Anne let's see okay here's Anne Ziff welcome to the program Anne thank you very much it's been wonderful being here this week Allison thank you so much and um, I love Santa Fe, and, I, and this is such a gorgeous gallery that it's been perfect for my jewelry. Thank you. It, it has. And I, listen, thank you. It's a great honor to have you here. And we, we have dedicated some wonderful space in the gallery to your, your jewelry and your, your, beaut your beauty in, in, in collecting gemstones. And I'd love to start with you here at this fantastic case filled with dramatic boulder opals. And so um, I'd love it if you could take some of these pieces out of the case and share with our viewers. I know that you love um, ancient cultures, um, Art Deco, Art Nouveau, Greek, Pre-Columbian, and I'm sure that these ancient cultures inspire you every day in the work that you do. This is an interesting one. You talk about ancient cultures. The gold is very much like Pre-Columbian gold. It's the same rich color, and I've mixed it here with black opals that are cut in nugget form. And you see how, how varied they can be. Sometimes oh. they're very dark, sometimes they're clear. And these are little rondelles also of black oak. Oh, gorgeous. So you could wear it long, or you could double it this way. And you love, you love ancient beads, you love beads of all kinds. You're, yes. you're making these beautiful necklaces and bracelets with these ancient beads. I use pre-Columbian beads, and I also use African ballet beads. Those beads are usually late 1800s. Did you say African ballet? Ballet. Ballet. It's a B-A-U-L-E culture. Oh, um, how I fantastic. I didn't bring any of the jewelry with that, but I use those discs in okay. the jewelry as well. And then you often will use a clasp that has your, um, the Z for Ziff at the end. Yes. And this is a great signature and great way to, to end your, punctuate your pieces. And what other fantastic opal pieces do we have in this case? This is another one that is a beautiful dark stone. And what I do with, with a stone, with a ring that's this large, you see I cut in the sides. Mm. So it looks like it might be an uncomfortable ring to wear, but when it's cut in like that, yes. it, it fits between your two fingers. Yes, it does. So that it has so sort of easy, a shoulder. It's easier to wear. And this is a tremendous black opal. Yes? Yes. And I just put a little black opal. bit of diamond. Along the side. And my signature oh. on the back of every ring is... The three, three diamonds. Yes. 
no reason for three except that uh, I didn't want one and I didn't want two. I know, right? But three. But three is a, a magic number. And, you know, as you're showing these pieces, Anne, I see these fantastic rings on your own hands. Um, are these tanzanites here? These are spinels. These are purple spinels. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Which is unusual to get get them that large. I bought most of these gemstones a long time ago. They're much harder to get now. Yes. And then they're uh, rubies and sapphires on the side. Pavade and set on the side. Oh, just gorgeous. And on the other hand, you have, are they uh, Savorite garnets? These are um, Demantoid garnets and uh, sapphires and aquamarines. So you, with a silly little frog. A little frog. So you love color. I love color. You love color, and, and, and these, ancient, these ancient cultures really inspire your, your design sensibility? Sometimes. Sometimes. Not always. I mean, I'm always asked what inspires me. Yeah. And it just depends on what you've seen that day, and we have this whole storehouse of knowledge in the back of our heads. So when you start looking at gems, who knows what it is that we're pulling forward? It's like so true. punching a button on a computer, and all of a sudden all these images and what we have seen. Yes comes out and you create something. You create something. And, and you certainly are exposed to wonderful cultures through your, your own collecting and through your work with many of the museums that you're, that you're involved with. And then opera and music and, and books. There are so many things that can inspire you. And so you also have this fantastic necklace in the case with what I, there are like tabs of boulder opal. Shall I take that out yes, as well? Yes, yes, let's take that one out as well. This one has the, I know boulder opals are, are so hard to come by now. It has the beautiful ironstone matrix. And this was, I, I bought this set of stones a long, long time ago. And I don't find anyone that's cutting them in groups like this anymore at all. But I oh. loved it. Yes. So I put black opal in between. Yes. And give them a little bit of space. You could wear it on either side. If yes. You to be. A very quiet um, yeah. tonality on that back side. I think this piece we, we just loaned to the opera on Saturday night. M wonderful Angel Blue wore yes. this for her premiere at the Santa Fe Opera. Um, that was extraordinary to see this on her beautiful neck. And you could see with the lights how much it glows. Yes. It's very glowing, and I love how the opal has just filled in. I hope the viewers can see how beautiful the opal is and the way it's filled in as I zoom in into that matrix, and it's just extraordinary. They're like just pools, rivers of, of opal and filling in. And you can take in. any one of these as a simple necklace with one hanging, and I think that's yes. one of the ideas that the person that cut them had, and I said, no, I need to keep them all together. Yes. Yes, this whole, this whole family of gemstones. They're beautiful. They, yes, thank you for sending your hearts. Um, it's just gorgeous. <laughs> really just extraordinary. And, of course, you're known for, for the beauty of some of these rings. I, love, I do love the simplicity of some of these rings. Let me zoom in. Okay, there we go. Um, again, opal set in very simple round and oval settings and just extraordinary on the hand. And, and the bands, <clears throat> again, for these rings are inset. So when, inset. when you put it on your hand, yes. you're... They fit well in your fingers. In between your fingers. So you can have a... So it doesn't feel like a big ring. Yeah. You have a statement piece, but it's, but it's comfortable on the hand. And then these, these earrings here, I'm going to... There they are. And would you mind taking... that? Yes, that pair, and then also the triangular... Um, yes. I just adore these earrings. Let me see if I can zoom in on those as well. So I love the way that these um, dangle and connect with one another. And um, what's nice about these is... Oh, and this pair. Is gold on the back when it hangs down so it's not just plain yes like we did filigree on the back of this you're one. not looking at just the back of the earring i love your thoughtful approach to the front and the back and the side and then of course on these the way that the elements move just tremendously beautiful i bought opal. a very large bag of these black opals all cut, Thank cut you. in various size but mostly ovals okay and then i just played with them and played with them to see which ones would, would fit and look well yes. together. Yes, yes. I mean, they make, they make a great statement, but I love when they're on the ear that they kind of drape and, and curve um, because yes. of the links that are, that are yeah. holding them together. Just wonderful. So the title of this exhibition that we've been doing with you is called Starry Night. So there was a strong focus on um, meteorite and on, um, I think, uh, what you might refer to as polka dot, this idea of the diamonds yes. um, in the field of, of, of this oxidized silver. I love, can you, can you pull out some of these necklaces, Anne? Yes. 
Um, let me grab, you know what, I'm going to grab a, let's see if I can find another tray. Um, I, well, we, we'll make do. We'll make do with what we can. But um, I will focus on this just for a moment while Anne is putting some of those pieces away. So this, this piece features balls of oxidized silver um, dotted with diamonds. And it's, it's just a wonderful way to wear certainly an abundance of diamonds, but in, to me a very wearable I basically don't statement. work in silver, but if this had been, not only would it have been impossibly expensive in 18 karat white gold, yes. uh, which the clasp is, but it would have been much heavier, so I yes. asked the jeweler to make the graduated beads okay. in, in the oxidized silver instead. So it's a, it looks like it might be heavy, but it's a very yes. light necklace. So this piece was made specifically for, for this occasion? Yes. Oh, I love that. I love that. It's just beautiful. And I didn't have quite enough beads. I had a, enough beads to make a very short necklace. Okay. Which many people don't wear. Yes. And I had a whole bag of these tiny beads. So I lengthened it mm. by about eight inches so it could hang easier for most people. Well, I think it makes an extraordinary difference to have those smaller beads. Um, um, interrupting the larger beads, and I love how it's graduated. That is a beautiful, beautiful necklace. And then you've got behind them, I see the long starry night earrings. I love these earrings. They're so lightweight. They're also, again, using the silver makes it much lighter than it would if I had yes. something in 18 karat white gold. And I love how the, the metal has been carved, even as they're, they're moving a little bit, they're twinkling um, mm -hmm. in the camera here, but they go from sort of a field of gray to a, dark, a darker um, field, and there's a little diamond that's actually separating each um, round link. I think it's a round, but it looks like a, it looks like a trillion yes. in between each one because of the way they've, they've been set. But what a beautiful um, burst of, so, and of when diamonds. You, when you put them on, it's very lightweight on the ear. Well, they're tremendous. The difference if you're wearing them all day. I wore them to the opera a few weeks ago and, and um, was very, very pleased with how my ears felt and how I felt, which was quite regal um, in them for the entire evening. Also, in this case, we have um, that beautiful Tanzanite and Moonstone bracelet. The, the, the life in these moonstones is just extraordinary. They have so much blue. Yeah, oh my gosh. And there's an unusual amount of blue in here, which is why I put it with the tanzanites. Yes. And I didn't want to put it with sapphires because I like the hint of purple that's in a tanzanite. Yes. And I felt it brought, put this out, it brought the blue. It, it truly does. Stones. And around each tanzanite, be gorgeous, I mean, in and of teeny themselves, each diamond. one are teeny little diamonds set again in the oxidite. Yes, please send your hearts. These, this is just extraordinary. And the, the life in these stones. I always, you know, I've been a jewelry collector for years and years before I started making jewelry, and I always look at the back yes. of a piece of jewelry as yes. well. Yes, yes. You know, it's funny, um, I, I think about an opera production, and I think about every single person who's involved with making an opera sing. Um, from the stage performers to the orchestra, everyone in the pit, everyone in the back, the technical apprentices, everyone in wigs and makeup. So when you liken, you know, the fact that the back of the piece of jewelry needs to be as thought out and as thoroughly um, um, created. It has to work together. It has to work together, and it's, it's like any great art piece. Everything has to be considered so that the entire piece comes through in a joyful, and um, it, we, you, you know, we, we make it look easy. Yeah. But there are so many components. Well, and it's one of the reasons why I put tiny diamonds in this, because yeah. the diamonds will reflect light in a different way than yes. the moon, moonstones or the tanzanites. So when you're wearing it, it will reflect a little bit of light. Well, I'm, I'm zooming in. I'm quite close on the piece now, but it shows the wonderful life in these gemstones. And this is, this is nature's palette, and it's really just extraordinary, um, the life in these stones. What else? Oh, okay. So, so we were also talking about the use of meteorites for um, for this exhibition, and I can see in the corner here these diamond and meteorite. I love these, and I'd like to talk about them and the extraordinary um, lightweight quality of of these pieces. I was wearing some of your diamond and quartz earrings over the weekend, and I was just amazed with how lightweight they were and to make just a stunning statement. Um, but and these are oh. unusually light. The, the centerpiece here is 
a slice of meteorite. Um, it has the natural crystals. Yes, when you slice it that thin and then you polish it, highly polish it, those are the natural striations in the meteorite itself. Oh my gosh, really? So when I first found these in a gem show in Munich in uh, 10 years, no, 15 years ago, I had never seen them cut like that. So I buy them in different sizes and mix them with top diamonds, and these are okay. slices of black and white diamond on the bottom. Yes, and then on the top you have a rose cut diamond. diamond. And those are just beautiful, and those are set in white gold. Yes. And again, so lightweight and just so, so easy to wear. So easy to wear, just extraordinary. Just extraordinary. Um, what, what, so your favorite stone today is, is, would you say, opal? It's probably opal because opal can vary so much. I didn't bring any of the beautiful fire opals to this show. Uh, yeah, okay. But, uh, but um, there's so many different kinds of boulder opals and Yahweh opals and black opals, and, and they come in so many different colors and fires within. Yes. Uh, that's probably my favorite. Your favorite. And what is your, what is your favorite opera right now? That's always a tough question. It, it depend, I, as I said to you in one other conversation, it depends on the mood you're in and uh, what, probably what you're going to see that night. Yes. I'm seeing tonight is a brand new opera, so I have no idea if it's my favorite or not. Yes. But it's Lord of the Cries. Lord of the Cries, which is premiering in Santa Fe this yes. evening with the wonderful Anthony Roth Costanza as the lead. Can't wait to see him perform tonight. I would love to... Um, is there something in this case, Anne, that you want to talk about? Well, I or, think this, this ring is interesting. Yes. Because you know, not everybody can afford a great big diamond and this is set like a cocktail ring okay with all of the diamonds setting around it okay let me see if i can zoom in so our viewers can see it oh and my gosh so this is a moonsteiner cut yes okay but it's a perfectly clear crystal that moonsteiner atelier carved from the back so yes. you could buy this and have a a big cocktail ring without the cost of a diamond or, or an expensive gem. Yes, yes, and it looks like, um, well, I think you had noted it was at maybe a hexagon in the center, but yes. it also looks like a star, looks a star of David, David on the inside, and then all of the diamonds um, set around it. So it does sit high on the finger, but it's a really beautiful statement. And of course, the lovely Susan Graham um, opera, mezzo-soprano yes. extraordinary. You can see her wearing this ring and some of this jewelry um, in our recent photo shoot. One of the pieces that I truly love, and I'd like to come over to this case, Anne, um, as we wrap up, is this fantastic um, aquamarine and labradorite necklace. Yes. I just think these stones are, are dreamy. I love the shape of them. I love the color of them. This is a German stone cutter. I think they are among the best stone cutters for colored gems in the world. Yes. And um, the shows that are at Eder Oberstein. Eder Oberstein. Gem, yes. Gem cutting center. Yes. Is where I buy some of the big groups of stones, and this is these are particularly well cut and graduated ah. labradorites. But again, it wasn't quite long enough. Okay. And I didn't want to introduce a metal. Yes. So I, I had these also German cut by Peter Nabert, and I put the aqua in between, and it brings out a little bit of the blue. It does. And then I had enough left over for a matching bracelet. Oh, my gosh. There is a dying. <laughs> I just think that the, the, the life, again, you know, um, Labradorite is the same family of, of, of Moonstone, the Feldspar, and they have this adularescence, this beautiful quality of the way the light um, is within and, and coming out of those this, stones. This one, oh. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but this one yeah. is particularly fiery. Well, it, as you lift it up and as you move it, we certainly can see, yeah, we can certainly see the, the life and the way the, the light is, is on these stones. This is really an exceptional necklace. And I love the simplicity of the clasp that you, you have it threaded with a little Self. screw. Oh, thank yes. you for sending all the hearts. I agree with you. It's so beautiful. Um, thank you. Um, yes, this is an extraordinary necklace. And Anne, I can't thank you enough. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our viewers this morning? I think this is... Oh, yes. 
Uh, because we had the Starry Night theme going on. Yes, we did. I made a special collection of bracelets. And there's bracelets. a couple over, I think I have some more. Oh, they're right here, the yes. meteorites. Yes. So yes. We do, I just did a very simple bracelet with one of the flat cut discs. Yes. And in these other Let two. me pull this up close to the camera so you can see the wonderful crystal. Again, the crystallization of these, this meteorite. It's a thin slice, but it's a very cool bracelet on with that natural, it's very sort of like a stainless steel, you know, in look against the gold. And then I love these. These are meteorite beads, mm. and, but they're, they're just slightly polished, so they're darker. Yes. And I put a, a little gold bead on the end to hold it there. One is set slightly off center. Yes. So you could... They could be layered. together. Yeah. And I thought I would bring this out for yes. people watching because I did a collection of just beaded bracelets for this show. Yes. Since people are layering things so much. Yes. These are natural diamonds. Yes. Cut but unpolished. Uncut. So and who knows what it would look like if I polished them all. Yes. But I think it's wonderful fun to just have a bracelet of diamonds that's not sparkling. It's quite fantastic. The, na the natural cubes, and I know it's not easy to drill a hole into a diamond, yeah. you know, you don't want to lose too much carat weight, but the idea of having these uncut diamonds um, around the wrist is so beautiful. And the last piece that I would love you to show is this tourmaline and quartz with meteorite necklace. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a favorite of mine in the exhibition. Um, and um, when I look at, yes, of course, carefully there. And so this, again, was made for this show because of our kind of theme. These are all meteorite beads. Mm. And I thought, well, what's going to work with them? I, I had this collection of quartz with black tourmaline. Yes, those threads of tourmaline running through the quartz. And then I did 18 karat gold beads oh. on the side. But it, it reads well as a long necklace, yes. but can also it can be doubled. Be doubled. Yeah, it's really very beautiful. And I, I, love, I love this piece for Patina. I think it really suits our, our aesthetic and our mission in the gallery to present pieces that have beautiful texture and, and contrast and, and life and celebrating natural stones and, and metals and um, just gorgeous. I usually don't make sweets of things, yeah. but as with those um, labradorite and tourmaline, um, you could also have two bracelets and a necklace that is long yes. or doubled. Yes. And this has been such a, 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 a treat for me to welcome you into the gallery okay. and, um, you know, your, your wonderful um, um, patronage for the arts. And hi, Peter, thanks for joining. Um, is just um, incredible. Thank and you. It, and it, it goes across, you know, such a range of the, of the performing arts, whether it's you know, sitting in your studio and making jewelry um, to, to being in front of a large audience um, um, and sharing your love for opera and the performing arts with the world. It's really a treat to welcome you. And um, well, many thanks to you and Ivan for this opportunity. Absolutely. It's been a wonderful week. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, Anne. And thank you all to everyone who joined us this morning, um, coming to you live from Patina Gallery. And it was a treat to welcome Anne to, to, the, to the stage, to Patina's stage. And I hope everyone has a wonderful week and everyone stays healthy and happy and um, enjoys a soul-stirring day, as we say here at Patina. Take care and stay well. And, in, and go to our website, patina-gallery.com. If you can't visit with us here in the gallery, please join us online. The exhibition is live on our website. And then this video will, will be, will, can be shared. It'll be on all of our social media channels. So everyone take care and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.